In this video, we are going to take the sample lines that we created and create section views out of them. Now we have all the bits and pieces required. We have our surfaces, we have our alignments, we have our profiles, and we've created the sample lines. So the next step in our design is to create the section views, which can be done here as well, or under the sections dropdown, create section views or multiple section views. Now the top one, the create section views here, will create one section view and it'll be the one that you pick. So whatever station you want, it will create a section view of that specific station. Now, if you have 160 odd sections, you don't wanna do this manually one by one. So under the sections dropdown, we're gonna create multiple section views. And up pops our create multiple section views dialog box. We have to select our alignment and our sample line group. Station range automatic, we wanna do from beginning to end or you could specify that you only go, want to go from zero to say 2000. I'm going to sample all of them. Now it's going to name them section view station dash next counter. So we'll leave that default. We can type a description. It's going to place them on a layer and it asks us what style we want to use. And I only have a five time section view in here. So I'm going to click next. Then we have to pick the placement options. So do we want to use a template from a, a file to place the sections on sheets? Or do we want to place them in a grid and model space? We cannot automatically create sheets using this options, but I, I just want to get them into the drawing and see what they look like. And then it asks for a plot style. So how do we want these to come in and look? So I'll go in and edit that. The information tab, again, just the name. Under array, do we want to do rows or do we want to do columns? So it's going to create them in columns or it's going to create them in rows. I'll leave it in rows. Start corner will be the upper left. Align the section views via the center line and the cell size is uniform for all or per column. It's just nice to have them all the same size. It makes it a little bit easier. And then how much space do we want between the adjacent section views? So 75 millimeters or whatnot. And then we can add a drafting buffer between the two. And as we click on things, items over here highlight. So you'll see that little orange arrow is highlighted. The plot area is when we go to plot these, how far apart do they get space? And display, we can turn off grids and print areas and the sheep order. And then finally, the summary is just a recap of the previous four tabs. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. After changing that one option, make them go left to right. We'll hit next. Now the offset range, we could specify it. How far left and right do we want to be? Or do we want to leave it on varies? Because it's going to make it make them a little bit wider or skinnier based on what's shown. So we'll leave it on, on the automatic. Same with the elevation range. We want them to be automatic or we can conform it to be a specific height. So let's make this entire section, knowing that some of these we have 14 meters of cut, let's make them all 25 meters tall. And to follow a section, we want it to follow 50th Avenue. So we want it to be based on the center line of our 50th Avenue and 25 meters from there. We'll click next. And we can select the sections to draw. So I wanted to draw existing ground. I wanted to draw my corridor and I wanted to draw that corridor surface. We can clip a grid. We can turn off the draw aspect. We can choose a label set if we want to label them. However, sections make an absolutely large amount of labels, an astronomical amount of labels. So I'm just going to leave everything set to none. And what style do we want? So I just have EDDT section, my corridor and section here. And then we can override the style if we want. I'm going to click next again. And we have an option for data bands. So we can place data bands in these if we want to. So the band set, band type, we can select our surfaces and, and if we want that information. But I'm not going to add in any ba bands. So I'm going to click create section views now. And Civil 3D asked me to identify the origin. Now, if you remember, we, we told it to be the top left. So I'm not gonna place it here. I'm not gonna place it over here. I'm gonna place it down below my profiles. So they build down into the right and they don't overlap anything. 
Now I'm going to give Civil 3D a minute or two to build these because we are building 150 sections. And it looks like they're done now. So I'm going to come and take a look at these. And it looks like it built some of them the way I wanted. However, some of these are sticking off the sections themselves. So let's get rid of these section views and create them again. Sections, create multiple section views, and let's not play with some of those options. I'm gonna hit next. I want them in my model space. Offset and height. I want automatic elevations. I'm not gonna mess with that. I think that's what caused the problems and create section views and place them in again. This should hopefully leave them centered. So again, if you saw, I just right clicked on the section view groups over here and deleted. And as you see, some of these are quite tall. However, our road is now more or less centered in every single one. However, they're not a consistent height. So zooming in on one of the sections, if we look at it, we have something that looks similar to a profile view. We have our outside border, we have an internal grid, we have a dashed line showing our existing ground. We have our corridor piece. So this is right from the corridor and this is all the various layers in the corridor itself. And if we use the shift space command, we have our design ground surface here. So taking a look at these section views, again, if we select one, we have all the same options. We have section view properties. We can look at the offsets we can come in and tell this, okay, this one doesn't need to be 65 meters wide. We can go maybe minus 30 on this and save ourselves a little bit of, of room on the page. Why go wider than you need to? Section view, back to section view properties. I shouldn't have hit enter. Elevations. We can specify the elevations as well. 1100 to say 1110. And that's given us a smaller section, which looks better because we've we've turned uh, we've minimized the size of it. If I wanted to turn any of these pieces off in this specific section, I can come in here and turn off what I want to what I don't want. You can change your styles. You can change the update to dynamic or, or static. We can add in bands if we want volume tables, profile grade lines, and take a look at all that. Again, help the help button here. We'll open up help and we'll definitely help you out. So that is a quick uh, command on how to create multiple section views. And again, the sections create section view. We'll just create the one you want. And in the next video, we are going to take a look at editing these section views.